Underneath it all, everything's actually Yo, fine. yo, yo, top of the day, top of the day. It's your boy Carlo Six here again with Dolo Talks Podcast. Once again, stop by, man. It's been a while, been a little busy, school, working. Man, no excuse, though. Back here with y'all today. Get this next episode going. Dolo Talks Podcast, man. I'm going to be talking to, you, to y'all today about... um. Man, it's really been a, a concept, a conversation that has been relevant for the past year or so, even two years, uh, diving into corporate America a little bit. But uh, what we'll be talking about is really authentic versus artificial, artificial versus authentic dialogue and communication. I'm going to share my screen with you real quick so you can see what it is that we're talking about. All right. Artificial versus authentic communication. What does that mean to you? You know, you see people speaking artificially. You see people speaking authentically. It's the fake versus the real. Bot versus human customer service. You know, you got the bots on the phone. They can't really understand what you're saying. But you also have the real people on the phone who might argue with you. You know, so you kind of got to pick and choose, you know, what you like, what you don't like. Um, mass produced versus handmade, the Yeezys versus the Cheezys, the Jordans versus the, you know, what I'm saying like you know, you know where I'm getting at. So artificial versus authentic communication. Once again, this is Carlos Six, Dollar Talks Podcast. Um, so yeah, let's dive right in. All right, man. We say that we conduct a conversation, but the more genuine a conversation is, the less it can, its conduct lies within the will of either partner. Just think about that. That was from Gadamer, Gadamer, 1994, philosopher, who was studying uh, really just the, the topic, the concept between artificially speaking and authentically speaking uh, with one another. So when, it's, when, going, when entering into a conversation, you want to go into that conversation really without a plan you know at Dolo Talks Podcast we really promote authentic dialogue and what that means is really having a convo with someone with our guests and really and not not really trying not going into that combo trying to get something out as a result of you know um trying to take advantage or take control of the combo but instead you want to go into that combo and and with with open arms and with with an open mind to you know, eventually find out what's going to come out of that conversation. And that's usually the reward. So that's what authentic dialogue is, is, you know, blindly entering a conversation with someone, hoping and, and wishing for the best outcome because y'all are both bringing y'all's authentic selves to the conversation. We might have seen uh, situations to where people, you know, are art- artificially speaking within the conversation and you are talking to this person, but you don't feel like they're being honest or truthful or being their authentic selves with you. So as a result, you don't really trust what they have to say or you don't really believe, you know, uh, the the uh, reality of that conversation, the, gen- the how genuine it is. So where do you fall on the spectrum between artificial and authentic? Um, you don't have to answer this question, but I think internally we all do know and we all are aware of where we fall on that spectrum, you know? Um, so like, you know, based on your knowledge and your, the way you communicate, uh, just kind of just think about this and ask yourself, you know, where you fall on that spectrum and really just try to hold yourself accountable. Even try to, if you know that you fall on one end, take a, you know, challenge yourself and work on entering the other side of the spectrum to see how that works out for you. It might do you well or it might do you bad, but you will never know until you actually jump in and try to find that out so yeah uh going into a little bit of theory and principle behind artificial versus authentic conversation uh donald hebb he was a philosopher is a philosopher um his his philosophy still lives on donald hebb uh really he brought up a very strong concept theory uh back in the day had to do with really more it's more scientific uh but to dumb it down the concept is fake it till you make it in other words whatever it is you're trying to do or participate in and you don't feel like you're actually worthy of being within that space 
hey, fake it till you make it. Act like you've been there. Act like you've done it. Act like you are the best for the job. And over the course of time, people, they might believe you, you know? So that that is a, a tactic that has deemed to serve as effective um, in the workplace, you know, an industry with whatever it is that someone's doing, dating someone, people, catfishing, that's faking it till you make it. But scientifically, what this really is, is uh, we have to read this because it's pretty, pretty difficult to understand. But um, the axon of cell A is near enough to excite a cell B and repeatedly or persistently takes part in firing it. Some growth process or metabolic metabolic change takes place in one or both cells such that A's efficiency as one of the cells firing B is increased. That was a little bit complicated. That's why I dumbed it down to the fake it till you make it, you know. But uh, looking at that, you know, the scientific process of, of what's occurring whenever we are participating or engaging in this fake it till you make it process, we are essentially forcing cells in our brains to collide with one another enough to, enough to the point to where once they actually, you know, join uh those those axons believe that you know it's it's within that new state and doing that enough will eventually cause those you know those those cells to uh combine and really make you feel like you are participating or engaging within a space or an activity that you feel comfortable with doing but in all actuality you may or you may not really feel that, or you know um obtain that comfortability internally externally it looks great so what what does that really mean you might see people in, in you know working professionals who appear successful on the surface on you know publicly uh they look like they have got it figured out but those those people sometimes you know they go home or they speak to their wives those pillow talks and they have they're trying to figure out hey why am i so successful but i feel so not satisfied or not fulfilled or depressed despite my success why they've been successful at faking it till they make it to the point to where it kind of it, it it comes back to bite them at the end of the day. Um, you you can't fake you can't lie to yourself. In other words, so this is a film. The film's called "Sorry to Bother You." From it's a few years old, maybe like twenty seventeen. Um, Cassius Green is the name of the character inside of here. What he pretty much had to do was uh, code switch within his telemarketing job in the Bay Area. What code switching is, is pretty much having to or pretty much having to, to change your personality, your appearance, your linguistics, just the way you, you, tip, you typically carry yourself to accommodate or make other people within the, the same shared space to feel better or more comfortable with your presence. So I'm going to show this video really, really quick. You guys can get a feel for, um, you know, what it is. This is telemarketing. Stick to the script. Taking it through make Hey, hello. Uh, Mr. Davison, cash is green here. Sorry to bust. Let me give you a tip. You want to make some money here? Use your white voice. <laughs> My white voice. I'm never talking about Will Smith. Uh, like Donald Glover. Hey, Mr. Kramer. <laughs> this is Langston from Regal View. Yeah, so that's code switching right there. As always, we'll be getting this that out regular to you right away. You're doing so good with the voice thing. Holla, 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 holla. Help him out. We have to code switch and oh, yeah. fake till he made it. All right. You know? So, yeah. you're going upstairs. Check power this out. They even have their own elevator. Welcome, power caller. I hope you did not master. <laughs> All right, we're going to quit. You're going to stop it right there. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's you know, a media source that I have used to influence and and um inform this research uh sorry to bother you going to the next slide to conduct a conversation means to allow oneself to be conducted by the subject matter to which the partners in the dialogue are oriented so what does that mean whenever you're going into a conversation you want to really just allow yourself to to fall into the convo, go in with an open mind, with open ears, and really, you know, not go go in there with a goal, but go in there expecting or not even expecting anything at all. And that's really the, the best way to get the most value out of your dialogue. 
Uh, so like I said, let, let the subject conduct you. Don't be conducted. Don't conduct the subject that makes any sense. This is a hard to, hard to read quote, but, uh, hopefully you guys get the point of this. Um, so like I said, listen, focus on the content, ignore your own self-perception and your own biases, be there, uh, recenter and also immerse yourself into the conversation. You will definitely reap more by approaching it in an authentic fashion but like i said there's time there's a time and a place for everything in some places we're speaking off some in some places and spaces speaking authentically might not serve you justice um look at politics <laughs> for example donald trump but on the flip side him speaking authentically also creates a stronger relationship of, and rapport and trust building with people who are voting for him. Why? Because they, he's he's being transparent. And that transparency allows people to really know that what he says, he might he might actually mean it. But look at Barack Obama or, or other um, presidents who speak, but they're speaking politically correct. What they say sounds very good. It sounds like the right answer each and every time. But their actions, you know, as a result, don't really go in alignment with what was said. And that's where the disparity between the artificial and the authentic dialogue kind of comes in. So they can get to you, make it as good for the right now. But later on down the road, it might come back and bite you in the ass. So just think about that, you know. David Goggins. Do you guys know who David Goggins is? If not, man, you should really look him up. David Goggins, he is a retired Navy SEAL. He was in the military, have been in multiple branches, Air Force. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy motivational guy. 100% unapologetically authentic. Uh, this is a guy who served our country, military. So you would expect him to be speaking on behalf of America. And that's probably artificially. Why? He's in the military. He, he works for the government. You know, but no, complete opposite. This guy started from the bottom, now we're here. You feel me? So with that being said, he he really goes onto podcasts, Joe Rogan, writes books, and he, he says what's on his mind <laughs> unapologetically. And and uh, as a result, people really, you know, uh, follow him and, and, and look, you know, look up to him uh, for the things that he says and his 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 general message to you know the public about mindset determination motivation persistence consist consistency you know uh, doing what it takes to become a better version of yourself um so for his situation him speaking authentically serves some justice but if he was someone who was to just go to these podcasts and say what everyone expects him to say he might not have experienced the same level of success that he is experiencing so this is one situation to where authentic dialogue is more beneficial than speaking artificially. It just depends on what your brand is, per se. So here at Dotos Podcast, we promote authentic dialogue. So we're going to tell you what it is. We're going we're gonna to talk about those. We're going to nudge. We're going to put those uncomfortable conversations on the desk and open up that dialogue to whoever is willing to speak about it, you know, because that's, that's, what, that's what is encouraged. We don't want to keep on throwing controversial topics under the rug hoping that people forget about it no let's attack it right right here right now and you know get it out there so that way we can re find some action and in, in, in some um solutions for the things that we're discussing so uh yeah that's david goggins it's kind of a paradox right how authentic and artificial kind of you know doesn't work out but kind of does work out depending on what it is you're trying to do that you're trying to do so going to the next slide why is it so hard to have authentic di authentic talk, authentic dialogue, authentic talk at work with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, with your mother, your father, your family, your doctor, with your teacher, your you know, your boss? Why is it so hard for us to really attack those uncomfortable conversations? Is it because of comfortability? Are we just trying to survive? Uh, like you know, what do you what do y'all what do you think it is? What is the reason why why authentic talk? It's so hard. Um, and another question, why is artificial conversation so cringy 
if it is cringy or if it's not cringy to you, why do you think it's appropriate? Uh, even despite, you know, knowing how you truly feel on the inside, if you feel anything at all. Uh, so, like I said, some people partake in that kind of communication because that's what they know. Uh, some of these things are passed down from generation to generation, from parents, grandparents. So sometimes it's really out of our control, but it takes you to actually want to, you know, uh, expand and learn more or go against your own grain to, you know, yield more uh, from a communication standpoint. No one knows in advance what will come out of a conversation if you're speaking authentically. So if I'm going to talk to one of my boys about a, a problem that we have had in the past, I don't know how that combo might go. It could end up in us fighting or it could end, it could end up in us hugging, hugging it out and moving on and becoming even stronger friends as a result of having that conversation. But going into a conversation, knowing what's going to come out and knowing what you're going to say and, it might not result that way because there might be a misunderstanding somewhere along the lines because you predetermined, you pre-organized this conversation. So even though you did that, the person on the other end might not have or might have did it differently. So as a result, those, you know, going into that combo with that artificial strategy didn't really necessarily work out. Um, but it can, though. Like I said, it depends on context, depends on where you are. And what's going on. So just think about, you know, what situations to where speaking artificially might benefit you. Uh, spoken politics earlier, but like I said, it, it gets very slippery. That's why I wanted to really attack this, this topic today to really get y'all thinking about speaking artificially versus speaking authentically and listening artificially versus listening authentically and just living life that way or the other way. Just Start thinking about that, you know, on your everyday walk of life and just realize how or, you know, notice how it might improve your quality of life um, with the things that you see, believe, take in, put out, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. Lastly, just try it out, you know, learn yourself, attack your weaknesses Go into these conversations with an open mind. Just get rid of your bias. It's hard to. I know it's very hard to, but try. You know, um, what makes a person more well-rounded is, is placing yourself into unknown and uncharted territories. That's kind of what I what I spoke on with my uh, podcast, with Elijah Williams, uh, Nomadic Intelligence. You know, entering uncharted territories to really figure out who you are. Uh, you know that show, uh, Lone Survivor. You know, Naked and Afraid. All those survivalist shows. People really kind of go out there to to test themselves and see what they're made of. So, with that with that being said, I really challenge my call to action. My challenge for all of you is to really just try the other side out. If you're an artificial communicator, an artificial person, just try being real. You know, just try telling somebody what you really feel. If you're an authentic person and you only tell people what you feel, just try to go against your own grain and, and get with the program, you know, uh, even though even if that program might not be a program that you find that you're that you, you know, find interest in or that you that you're cool with. See how that works out for you. It might op open up more opportunities for you if you are able to set your your opinions, and your values to the side and get with the program. Um, I personally am a very, very authentic person. Um, but I have actually invested and, in, you know, went against my own grain to go and learn not how to be artificial, but how to understand artificial conversations, uh, topics, people, you know, that way I can, I can really improve my own personal communication and become a more well-rounded communicator, a more well-rounded individual and man and contributor to society. So, uh, that's it for today. This, this talk was about, like I said, artificial versus versus um, authentic communication. We use a few examples. Uh, like I said, shoes, dialogue, people, presidents, politics, um, podcasts. There's plenty of ways in which you can engage artificially or engage authentically. But like I said, 
whether no matter which side that you're on, I challenge you to try the opposite side and see what that does for you. Thanks a lot. Once again, this is Carlos Six with Delo Talks Podcast. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Thank you. on in your life right now.